Welcome, I am Cyril Stover. Uh, the National Automotive Design and Development Council says its vision is to transform Nigeria into a modern and industrialized nation, even as it designs and implements policies, programs and strategies for effective, competitive and diversified private sector. So, how far will the goal of positioning Nigeria as one of the leading automotive manufacturing nations in the world. Today, I sit with the Director General of the NADDC, Jelani Aliu, MFR, accomplished automotive designer, who was, until his appointment in 2017, lead designer at General Motors, the car giant in the United States of America. Now, among his acclaimed designs, the Pontiac G6 and the Chevrolet Volt. Jelani Ali, thank you for coming on one-on-one. -on -one. My pleasure. You've been here before, quite a long time ago, I do recall. Uh, that was even before uh, you became the uh, DG of the Automotive uh, uh, Design and Development Council. So um, a lot has happened since you were last on one-on-one. -on -one. So it's good to see you here once more. Good to see you too. All right. So let's talk about automotive designs, the industry generally, yeah. and um, we'll be talking cars, cars, and more cars, <laughs> and uh, the Nigerian car, mm -hmm. you know, it used to be the dream of this country to say, yes, we can have something we can call a Nigerian car, just like everyone would say, oh, the American cars are this and that, or mm -hmm. the French cars are this, so... How far will your goal define for us the goal of the National Automotive Design and Development Council? Yes, uh, first I'd like to say it's really uh, a great honor and very exciting to be back in Nigeria, uh, back home, uh, to be able to play uh, uh, my, my, my role in helping move the country forward in uh, creating a better Nigeria for, for all of us. Uh, I've always been passionate about cars. And like I say, I uh, went to the United States, uh, not to get away from Nigeria, but to be able to learn and uh, develop my talents in automotive design uh, with the hopes that uh, someday I'll get that opportunity to come back home and add value. I'm very honored uh, to have this position uh, to lead the National Automotive Design and Development Council. Uh, our core responsibility uh, is to develop the local automotive sector. That is to give uh, uh, as much support as possible uh, and prioritize local production as against the continued importation of uh, vehicles built overseas. Because uh, we know that each time you buy a vehicle built elsewhere, you're transporting, uh, you're transferring and exporting opportunity out of Nigeria. Uh, but each time you buy a vehicle built or assembled in the country, you're helping develop a better future for all of us. The NA, uh, DDC is implementing what we call the NAIDP, uh, the National Automotive Industry Development Plan. Uh, it's a set of fiscal incentives and initiatives and programs to really drive uh, that local production. Uh, it has five key elements, uh, investment promotion, uh, improvement of standards, uh, uh, infrastructural development, uh, market development, and skills development. And in addition to that, there's also research and development into Nigeria and Africa applicable automotive uh, uh, vehicles and uh, components. And uh, NADDC has recorded major successes uh, in these five key areas and more. Uh, in terms of investment promotion, NADDC has uh, been able to bring into Nigeria over one billion U.S. dollars in investment. That is, over one billion dollars has been put into the Nigerian automotive sector by various companies, both within and from without Nigeria. Setting up factories and assembly plants in many states. We have assembly plants in Lagos, uh, Ota, uh, Anambra in Inewi, uh, Akwa Ibom, uh, Lagos. Uh, Kano, Kaduna, and more are coming up. 
Uh, we have very credible companies that have really gotten into the game. Uh, Dangote uh, has two plants in Lagos. He's now gotten a third one opened in Kaduna, uh, Dangote Pujo. Uh, we have uh, Innocent out of Innewi, uh, Omar also out of Innewi. Uh, we have uh, Honda West Africa out of Ota, uh, the Stallion Group, uh, which has under it Hyundai uh, and Changan and other marks, uh, is also uh, in Nigeria, in Lagos. Uh, we have uh, a pan uh, now uh, working uh, on assembling uh, 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 vehicles such as Hyger and uh, uh, Cherry. Uh, we have also a Meccano. Uh, Meccano is conglomerate that uh, is into many different uh, sectors and now they've gone into automotive with the Meccano Geely, uh, Larry Shitu, Eliza Day, uh, uh, and many others, the Origin Group. So many companies have really come in and invested billions of naira, over 500 billion naira, to set up uh, production plants. Now, this, 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 this is what I, I'd like to find out. How is this different from what we used to have? Um, back then, we had assembly plants. Pojo was in Kaduna. We had stair trucks. Um, we had them. We had Volkswagen in Lagos, and uh, they assembled cars. Although they brought in CKD, completely knocked down parts from other parts of the world and assembled. So, how is the development or investment in assembly plants now different from what we had before? Let's look at uh, where we were in the 70s and 80s with the uh, with Volkswagen. Uh, and, and, and Peugeot and Namco and the others that uh, you've mentioned and uh, we were assembling vehicles in the country uh, things were really looking up then round about 1986 uh, the price of crude oil uh, that the country was so dependent on uh, crashed from $27 a barrel to below $10 a barrel so overnight the country went into a recession all those Nigerians who could then uh, buy brand new Peugeots and Volkswagens woke up one day and they could no longer do that because the country had gone into a recession. So those co companies were forced to stop production uh, and a lot of them left Nigeria. Uh, not because they wanted to, not because the federal government said pack up and leave, uh, not because Nigerians didn't want to buy those vehicles, but Nigerians could no longer do that because of the recession. People, the purchasing power relatively dropped. So as a business, those companies could not sustain their operations and they left. Uh, the federal government realized uh, what had gone wrong and uh, knew that something had to be done. So in 2013, the NADDC was instrumental in strategizing and getting the necessary approval to start the implementation of the NAIDP. So from the numbers that we had in the 70s and 80s, all that activity going on, when that recession hit Nigeria, automotive production and many other industries sort of folded up. So from large numbers of vehicles being produced in Nigeria, it virtually came down to zero. Things virtually stopped. So the NAIDP revived all that, and that is why now we have this much amount of investment and these many companies being led by the private sector. Okay. These are committed private sector entities that believe in the uh, automotive sector in Nigeria and have pumped in these billions to really set up these assembly plants across the nation. A whole lot more than we had in the 70s and 80s, producing vehicles that are world class. Right, but the vehicles are churned out and um, they run on our roads. Could we at any point look at any one of some of these um, companies and say, yes, there's a Nigerian car somewhere in there? Yes, yes, there are. Uh, these companies operate in Nigeria. Uh, some of them are offshoots of uh, multinational OEMs. Right, right. For example, you have uh, Kia Nigeria, Hyundai Nigeria. Uh, Honda West Africa and uh, some of these companies are indigenous car companies okay. Innocent, Oma uh, and now Phoenix so in the way we, we ask yourself what is a Nigerian vehicle All right, that's it then you also ask yourself what is an American vehicle okay. or what is a Japanese vehicle um, the way vehicles are produced the way vehicles are envisioned uh, developed engineered and produced now is a whole lot different from the way they were uh, even in the 70s and 80s. Right. What we have now are 
what we call OEMs, original equipment manufacturers. They own the brand, they own the vehicle, but they engage other companies to even design some components and supply those components, and then they put them together as per their specifications. So a proverbial American car, the Chevrolet or the Ford, has components and parts coming from all over the world to make it an American car. But it is an American car because it is finally assembled in America to fit American needs. So a Nigerian car would be a vehicle put together in Nigeria, produced in Nigeria. It will definitely have parts coming from Nigeria and from other parts of the world. But as long as it is produced in Nigeria, assembled in Nigeria, and meets the Nigerian uh, needs, it is a Nigerian car. Right. In addition to that, NADDC has currently designed two Nigeria-specific vehicles. We've done the design. The design is complete. We're now working on the engineering and product development of those two vehicles. We believe when they come out, they will add significant value to uh, many levels in Nigeria. So that, that, that explains it now. The whole concept of um, the vehicle production has changed dramatically over the years. And so uh, you can have a Nigerian car, but it still has uh, some French components, some uh, British compo components. Uh, and you, you could also have a French car mm. that has American components in there, some bits manufactured. Same thing with an American car, which may also have mm. bits and pieces produced, manufactured and uh, um, uh, used in finally putting together that vehicle in America. So that has changed. Yes. So indeed, we can apply that and say those vehicles produced in Nigeria with components from Nigeria and other parts of the world are indeed Nigerian cars. Yes. Right. Now, how about uh, the local entrepreneurs and uh, manufacturers who have moved on or who started the race even before we got to this point and tried to manufacture what we knew then mm -hmm. as the Nigerian car. What has NADD, uh, NADDC been able to do about them and bring them on board with this new concept of manufacturing? Yes, so NADDC is a regulatory body. So we, we license all these manufacturers and producers in Nigeria. Uh, we make sure that they uh, meet minimum standards and that they are regulated. Uh, that's a big function, a big part of, of what we do. And a company like uh, Innocent uh, is doing extremely well out of Inyawi. Uh They are CKD level. They are also fabricating a certain percentage of the vehicles that they produce there in Inyawi. Uh NADDC comes in and supports technically uh, these companies where the need arises. And NADDC also has uh, 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 the potential and, and it has uh, given a financial uh, 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 support to these companies to either expand or, or set up uh, new uh, 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 divisions in, in their industries. So NADDC uh, continues to identify upcoming startups, for example, Phoenix Automobiles, uh, so, uh, started by a younger group, young Nigerians out of Maiduguri. Uh, we have licensed Phoenix and they're into producing electric vehicles. They will soon expand their businesses mm -hmm. and really offer those types of transportation solutions to Nigeria. Okay, we'll come to these uh, electric vehicles, but let's, let's look at the design of vehicles. And uh, it's evident it has also changed dramatically from years ago. Mm -hmm. And now, Sometimes there is a challenge actually identifying a vehicle and <laughs> knowing what brand it is because they all just look alike. The you know the design. So this is this how the world is moving this time, or this is the uh, way that sometimes you find it difficult to uh, tell the difference. They all, um, like I said, look alike. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes we ask, do these vehicles produced in Nigeria? also answer to these qualities that we see? That's a very interesting phenomenon uh, in car design. Uh, the history of automobiles, uh, it went through an era where there were very dramatic vehicles where you could, as soon as you see a vehicle, know if it's a Pontiac or Peugeot or Mercedes. They had all distinctive designs. Uh, then it, the whole industry went to an era where everyone uh, started to worry about aerodynamics mm -hmm. and started to worry about the vehicles that were really uh, making waves 
and they either copied the ones that people loved aesthetically or aerodynamics was allowed to dictate the shape of a vehicle and so they sort of relatively looked very similar. Then we're now in the era where a lot of distinctive designs are beginning to emerge uh, because the industry has reached a stage where relatively when you talk of uh, engineering they are all at the same level, relatively in the same level. Uh, vehicles now are a whole lot more durable and efficient than they were before. So you no longer have that differentiation where one vehicle is uh, very durable and another one just uh, falls up very quickly. So the companies began to ask, okay, how do we now differentiate mm -hmm. ourselves? So they have they have gone back to that era where the feel of a vehicle, the, the way it handles, the, the aura it creates is become very important. Now you're beginning to see vehicles that really have a distinctive feel and there's more and more of that. Because uh, that is the first thing you, that grabs you to a vehicle is the way it looks. So now we are going back into the era where vehicles are looking very dramatic and distinctive. Now with these vehicles that are well, been manufactured. We talked about um, minimum standards and uh, any DDC uh, being a regulator issues out licenses and the public sometimes can be skeptical and say look I've stuck to one brand because I believe that the brand uh, mm -hmm. has made a name for itself. You want to assure Nigerians that even all those vehicles that are produced now put together in this country are exactly comparable to all these other ones for the big brand names. Yes, they are. Uh, because these companies operating in Nigeria, uh, whether they're multinational OEMs or indigenous, uh, they're working to real global standards. They have partners, technical partners uh, from overseas, uh, with whom they have a, a, arrangements and agreements of being uh, 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 they have to produce vehicles to the same standards. Uh, that's one. So a vehicle assembled or put together in Nigeria, as take for example the Honda HRV out of Ota in Ogun State. That vehicle is of the same standards as a vehicle assembled, a uh, similar vehicle assembled overseas, either in, in, in Thailand or in the United States. Because that company is a multinational corporation and they have to meet the same standards mm -hmm. regardless of where they produce those vehicles. And additionally, NADDC has completed uh, the civil works, the construction of three automotive testing facilities. We have one in Lagos, uh, Zaria, and Enugu. Now, these are automotive testing centers uh, that have been completed, and we're now in the stage of equipment being brought in to install into those uh, facilities for testing vehicles and components. Once they're up and running, uh, any component or vehicle in Nigeria will not be allowed on the market until NADDC tests it, certifies it, and gives it a stamp of approval so as to protect the uh, Nigerian consumer. All right, let's talk about um, the maintenance of these vehicles. Back then, when uh, Nigeria went into that recession and all the car companies uh, folded up, mm. it became extremely difficult to get personnel, maintenance uh, technicians who could do a good job on these vehicles. And even spares became a problem to bring in. And the ingenuity of Nigerians came into play. You had local mechanics with little or no education who could now pick up one car, you know, fix it, get it running, and put in all kinds of uh, components, sometimes from different brands, and they got these cars up and running. Today, we're seeing cars moving to what can be called smart cars. And a lot of uh, these artisans and mechanics do not have the requisite knowledge and equipment to deal with these modern cars. Now that looks to me like um, a huge challenge in terms of self-employment. And I'm looking at the other side in also maintaining regularly these new modern uh, wheels as they call them, as we see on the roads. What has NADDC got to say about that? Yes, that falls right into one of our NAIDP pillars, uh, skills and manpower development. Uh, 
As we speak, NADDZ has trained well over 30,000 Nigerian youth across the country in mechatronics and other automotive related fields so that they are in a better position to understand the technologies embedded in these vehicles, diagnose problems when they come up and fix those vehicles. So we've done all this training of over 30,000 using third party workshops and in garages. So we asked ourselves, what could we do better? And we came up with the uh, idea that we need to build our own automotive training centers uh, to ensure that quality is man maintained and that we use the, the, the highest of curriculum, um, main, uh, curriculum and also well-trained uh, technicians. So we started by building six of them. Uh, and then we said, why don't we build some more to get to more grassroots uh, youth? So we have now completed building 18 automotive training centers across the country centralized locations with all the necessary equipment that would ensure young Nigerians are trained in mechatronics and all automotive related fields to create professional technicians that can fix these modern type vehicles that are actually, like you said, computers on wheels. Uh, so we've gone a long way and we hope that through these centers and we'll be building more that we can really reach the grassroots and make a difference to young Nigerians, take them off the streets, take them out of motor parks, give them uh, a, a skill that allow them to add value to themselves, to their families, to, the, to, to their communities and the nation in general. Now let's come to the electric cars. Well, the world is moving away from fossil fuels and um, cleaner energies, really. Mm -hmm. And transportation is no exception. How will Nigeria cope with this shift? Indeed, some countries have already set target dates when uh, public transportation vehicles uh, will no longer run on uh, fossil fuels. Um, what is Nigeria's position in all of this? Yes, electric vehicles are an amazing phenomenon. And like I say, they are good for Nigeria and they're good for Africa. Uh, we had the opportunity to be in Kenya a couple of months ago. United Nations had a, an event. Uh, it brought together all the uh, countries of the global south to talk about vehicle electrification. So Nigeria was there. Uh, a few other countries from Eastern Africa were there. Countries came from Latin America and, and, and South uh, Eastern Asia. Um, in 2015, Nigeria signed the Paris Accord on the mitigation of greenhouse gases. And we believe electric vehicles will allow us to meet those targets the quickest. So what are we doing at NADDC? We're doing at least, at least three things, if not more. Number one, we have been promoting uh, uh, the companies already in Nigeria to go into the production of electric vehicles. And as we speak, and as you're aware, that Stallion Group through Hyundai Nigeria has already started to assemble the Hyundai Kona EV. Jet Motors, uh, an indigenous car company out of Lagos, has started to offer the Jet Systems Mover, another 100% electric uh, delivery van currently undergoing a testing by GIG Logistics of Lagos. Uh, Max E is a motorcycle manufacturer that has developed a motorcycle, a two-wheeler that is electric powered with a unique uh, battery swap up, swapping uh, technology. Uh, Phoenix has just been registered by NADDC to produce electric vehicles and more companies are discussing with us to produce and offer electric vehicles in Nigeria. So the game has started. Then infrastructure. People argue, okay, how are you going to charge them? We have, uh, we acknowledge that there is challenge with electricity, but right. we have a solution, renewable energy. So we sat down and designed 100% solar powered electric vehicle charging stations. We built one uh, in Sokoto, the second one in Lagos, the third one in Insuka, and we position them at universities, not just to prove that the concept works, but to have young Nigerians bring this advanced technology to the doorsteps of young Nigerians, have them touch it, feel it, and then come up with even better solutions. And we're currently also about to commission the fourth one. Uh, this one will have a supercharger here in Abuja. We believe it will be the first supercharger electric vehicle charging station in, in, in Abuja. Uh, and then we're also encouraging the private sector, those who have now invested in uh, petrol stations, to begin to look at electric vehicle charging stations as a very viable uh, alternative mm. and a very 
a profitable business because that is where the, the world is headed. So we're, we're going electric on a number of fronts and we're about to complete the draft on the electric vehicle development plan, which will be a set of incentives, fiscal and, and, and regulatory uh, requirements that would aid electric vehicle development and usage in Nigeria. You see, we will get to a stage where individuals would have their own power source and plug in their cars. <laughs> yes. Electric vehicles have two levels of charging at least. You have uh, the embedded charger, which will use just the ordinary uh, 13 amp uh, socket, uh, 230, 240. So anyone can really plug in at home and charge overnight or while you're doing some other uh, tasks. Then you have the dedicated supercharger, which will charge the vehicle a whole lot faster. And that is the one that we're promoting hmm. uh, to the private sector to, to invest in and set up charging stations at strategic locations. I've heard some people say, why do you have all these sophisticated vehicles? Where are the roads? <laughs> um, for anyone traveling long distances with um, roads not in good shape, um, how soon will those sophisticated vehicles uh, disintegrate on these roads and um, you probably would not find any point to service them or charge them um, except you get to a major city where there are all kinds of challenges and the thinking is well why not fix one part of this first mm -hmm. the infrastructure mm -hmm. before you test run these vehicles what do you think about mm -hmm. that well you have two things going there. Uh, you have the, the product and the environment within which it will operate. When you have a product done right by a highly skilled and intelligent group, you design that product and develop it to work regardless of the extreme conditions. And that is what makes these vehicles that are produced in Nigeria different. The suspension, uh, the cooling system uh, is made to handle the extreme heat extreme dust and extreme conditions as against a vehicle used or designed for the streets of maybe Paris or Tokyo that vehicle is not meant to cope with the extreme circumstances here so that's one advantage why we believe the vehicles made in Nigeria are better for Nigeria and then an electric vehicle itself is really highly advanced technology but it's a much more durable setup it doesn't have any pistons no rings no crankshaft no engine oil so all those things that would typically go wrong in a vehicle are absent in an electric vehicle and an electric vehicle would actually be able to take much of the abuse that nigerian vehicles uh, face every day so but once again real advanced technology is able to cope with uh, real extreme conditions now tell us more about these uh, two um, uh, Nigerian uh, brands that you say the NADDC has uh, developed. Um, how suited are they to the environment here? You started talking about them at some point in time. Let's, let's get more of them. I, I, well, I, I, I wish we could see those models, but <laughs> maybe it's yes. a point. We will uh, make them public very soon. Uh, but these are vehicles designed with a very good understanding of Nigeria. What is it that makes Nigeria? What are the uh, financial challenges, uh, economic challenges? What are the climatic and geographical challenges? So these are vehicles that would fit the cultural, climate, terrain, and economic structure of Nigeria uh, and uh, different levels of uh, demography. So these vehicles, uh, I wouldn't be able to go much into detail, but uh, they would add value in our towns and cities and they would add value in our rural communities. SUVs have become very popular um, around and uh, um, sometimes you hear them say it's because of the topography, you know, the, the conditions. So is the NADDC looking into that? So uh, if that wouldn't be disclosing too much. <laughs> no. Well, SUVs are very popular for many reasons. Uh, number one, uh, yes, they are a status symbol. Uh, number two, you sit higher in an SUV. Uh, that does two things. Number one, uh, uh, practically it puts you in a safer uh, uh, s seating position. You're seating higher. You're more protected because you're higher than the rest of the traffic. And then you're also able to see better from inside an SUV because you're sitting higher. Your vantage point is higher. The angle is, is better. Uh, and then you also feel more, more confident. 
in, in, in that seating position. And you're able to carry more because the luggage space is more. So there are a number of, of, of characteristics that make an SUV type configuration uh, more advantageous. And SUVs have also moved into uh, uh, crossovers. So they don't really sit as high as SUVs. So they have lower center of gravity and they also have the advantages of more space, higher vantage point than typical SUVs and yet better than the sedan. All right. Well, we'll take a break here. When we return, there will be more about Nigeria and the automotive industry. Stay with us in one-on-one. -on -one. We can file your Saturday delight, going to places from the obscure to the hinterland and cities, bringing you development stories and perspectives, connecting the people with government and stakeholders on critical issues of our national life. We are live in Abuja. It's 9 p.m. every Saturday on the network service of the NTA. We can file. You can't afford to miss it. Why should we be in a difficult situation financially? Once upon a time we were rich, but we are not a rich country anymore. Disaster management is everybody's business. In all these times, uh, the organization turned to Nigeria. We would as much want to harness the capacity that is within us uh, so that we see how we can uh, become self-reliant. One month ended, I said, we are increasing one strike by two months. I mean, we are, we are incubating madness. Even if these are officials of government who have been told to go and enforce the law and they have gone against the law itself they must be held accountable one on one friday 10 30 pm on mga network thanks for staying with us we still have jelani Ali here the director general of the national automotive and design and development council Let's talk about some young individuals who have um, done some 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 things that are, uh, I mean, surprising to uh, lots of Nigerians. And how you relate with them? You hear of young Nigerians somewhere, sometimes in in not even urban centers. Mm. They develop something they call well a car. And they have some designs going around. Have you looked at some of these? And what's 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 the future of those young Nigerians with such talents? Yes, I believe God willing, their future is very bright uh, because of the huge amount of value they can add to Nigeria. Uh, NADDC uh, uh, is engaging them on a number of levels. Uh, the first is we really go in there, identify their talents encourage them and advise them on how best to develop their talent to become professionals and some of those routes would be identifying the right type of schools attending those schools so that you may become a professional and then join a company or a group that has the resources to really uh, develop those ideas into feasible uh, marketable products then out of those two we identify the best of them and then we bring them on and work with them. Uh, as we speak, we do have a number of such talented Nigerians uh, who are very good at automotive design working with us in our studio. And then a uh, third level of engagement, so, uh, so the, uh, the, the, the young group of uh, Nigerians out of Maiduguri that came up with the vehicle that they converted from petrol to uh, 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 electricity and now have even gone into developing their own uh, electric vehicle from the ground up we have licensed them uh, what is really good about them they came together as a team as a group from the company to really produce vehicles so we'll be working very closely with them to make sure that the vehicles meet minimum global standards of safety and efficiency but we continue to encourage we continue to look out uh, for talented nigerians and that is why we've even offered a training in the necessary software needed for automotive design uh we've done training across uh, uh the country in a number of uh geopolitical zones and we'll continue to do that that will give us the uh, ability to further identify these talented Nigerians and either support them with more training or bring them on to work with us for more experience. 
There is an area in which Nigeria has a huge challenge, and um, I'd like to bring that into our conversation now, and that has to do with mass transit. Mm. And um, the country hasn't done too well in that area. And now that we talk about these advanced designs, how will they key into the mass transit needs of Nigeria? Yes. Well, mass transit uh, has a number of stakeholders. You would have the uh, regulatory bodies such as us. You'll have the manufacturers. You'll have the municipalities or authorities that would support that uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, initiative. And you'll also have private sector that would invest in such. Well, on our part, uh, we have done the regulation, we have done the promotion, the support, and we have companies, quite a number of them, that are producing uh, uh, mass transit buses in Nigeria. Uh, you have uh, Inason, uh, you have Oma, uh, you have uh, Shock Leland, and, and other companies that can and are providing these buses and, and minibuses. So the product is available in Nigeria. We hope to really encourage uh, municipalities across the country. There's a one state government at least that we've reached advanced stage of discussion with in providing this type of uh, a commercial uh, uh, service in, in that state. So we, we urge and will continue to work with the relevant uh, stakeholders, municipalities, state governments, uh, and private investors to really leverage on these vehicles that are already produced in Nigeria to offer such service, especially now with vehicle electrification, we think it's an even more viable uh, financial option. Well, still, still talking mass transit, um, I'm looking at uh, are there peculiarities in um, what um, we used to refer to in the past as uh, pleasure cars and those that are, you know, for more uh, commercial purposes like uh, taxis and minibuses? Yes. Um, the whole ownership structure of automobiles is, is changing. Uh, more and more people now are opting to drive their personal cars where it's possible, drive their personal cars for leisure. But then when they do have to go to work, there's a, there's a lot of traffic, hop onto public transportation for that. Um, so we also begin to see that happen in Nigeria. Uh, some of these uh, commercial uh, services that are really advanced, uh, that are connected to, that are online, are beginning to, to be offered. For example, uh, there's a vehicle, a very cute uh, vehicle, which is actually called a cute, a very mini compact vehicle assembled in Nigeria by the Stalin Group, uh, has, has been launched in Ibadan, uh, offering these uh, uh, call, call, call services. You, you call it online and, and uh, it delivers you, uh, it takes you to, to where, you, where you need to go. So we're beginning to see that happening in Nigeria and, and with vehicle electrification too, there are companies that have proposals on the table uh, to offer commercial electric vehicles. The automobile is changing. Uh, it used to be that you really get engaged in driving a vehicle. You shift the gears, you step on the brakes, the clutch. Now they are more computerized, they're easier to drive, we're even headed towards vehicles would drive themselves, autonomous vehicles. We're going to get there. <laughs> yes. Okay. So when you, when you look at vehicles like that, more and more people would, would love to just use a vehicle to get from A to B and at the same time be able to engage in other activities. So as technology uh, improves, as technology is developed, uh, some of that will also be here in Nigeria because we are not an island, uh, we are part of the world and as automotive sector continues to develop, that type of technology would also have to be adopted and used here in the country. So you see us someday with the driverless vehicles and uh, I thought those things would only run in smart cities and is that a prospect for Nigeria or maybe? It is, it is for, <laughs> for two reasons at least, number one, uh, like I said, we, we can't be an island. If the rest of the world goes one way, we can't say we're not going. When cell phones became global, uh, Nigeria didn't say, no, we'll stick to landlines and forget about cell phones. We, we didn't do that. We adopted that technology 
and it has now transformed our lives. I'm sure there were arguments that, no, this won't happen in Nigeria. How do you charge it? No electricity, no, no this. But we, we grabbed it and we're now running with it. So the same with autonomous vehicles, same with electric vehicles. I believe Nigerians uh, would adopt it. And I think there's something about us that uh, really loves technology. So as long as it can be made available to us in a manner that we can attain it, uh, we'll grab it and use it to better our lives. One of the big challenges which we must talk about and um, um, you know a lot of all this will depend on affordability yeah. now you invest you produce the cars but how affordable are these vehicles <laughs> you will find that uh, the cost of a uh, vehicle is still way 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 beyond the reach of uh, middle income earners and um, there are no ways, we still are a country where to buy anything brand new, you have to walk in with, I'm telling you, cash, all of it. Mm -hmm. How do we surmount this? Yes, that uh, marketing structure in Nigeria really makes it hard to purchase, especially uh, big uh, items. And uh, anywhere in the world, uh, buying a vehicle is it, a big decision, because anywhere in the world are relatively a whole lot more expensive than many of the items people buy. Mm. Uh, and that is why in those parts of the world they have vehicle financing. Uh, and you get mostly this vehicle financing through through traditional banks. You're able to walk into a bank, as long as you can prove you have an income, that bank will give you a loan uh, to buy that vehicle at very low interest rates. Unfortunately, that is not available in Nigeria. Uh, it, 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 it used to be <laughs> eons ago. Um, yes. I do recall that at least in the civil service then, you had an arrangement like that. I was a beneficiary of that. I, mm. I, 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 I had a car somewhere in the, in the late 70s and uh, <laughs> the early 80s through an arrangement like this, mm. which unfortunately no longer exists. It's very hard to come by and that is why we're working very closely with, with banks, uh, private banks. We're in discussions with Wema, Zenith and uh, 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 Jais to provide single digit auto financing. And CBN has also become very interested. So now the conversations have been kicked up a notch uh, with CBN coming in so that we can provide single digit financing for uh, made in Nigeria vehicles. What we really want to happen is for the federal government, just like it did for sugar, just like it did for cement and rice, to really come in big time and uh, be in and support the automotive sector. Uh, we need federal government intervention to really provide these types of uh, funds necessary for vehicle financing so that more and more Nigerians can really benefit from such a type of arrangement. At what stage would you say you are now? in attaining your goals, you wanted to make Nigeria one of uh, um, the uh, frontline automotive uh, uh, <laughs> manufacturers in the world. Uh, you set yourself uh, five strategies, you said? Uh, mm. On a scale of uh, one to five now, where are we? We have come a very, very long way. Uh, building Nigeria uh, as a nation uh, I believe that is also on track. Uh, yes, the nation still has uh, ways to go, but I think overall we are making progress. Uh, there isn't any nation in the world that doesn't have challenges. Uh, each country has its own peculiar problems. Uh, so I believe uh, we're making headway as a nation, and I believe the uh, industrial sector is also making headway. Yes, there are challenges, but we must not allow ourselves to be defined by those challenges. We can only be defined by our dreams and aspirations. We can only be defined by what we can achieve by a better tomorrow. So we will continue. We will continue to do our best. Uh, we will continue to seek necessary support from all the, the necessary stakeholders to really make this happen. Because whether it's the automotive sector or any other sector in Nigeria, it takes quite a number of players to really achieve uh, uh, that goal. But I believe once there's a unified vision as a people, as a nation, to make that difference, uh, those challenges would begin to, to fade away. How much can this industry contribute to reducing to a large level the unemployment rate in the country? Very much, very much. Because the automotive sector is about, uh, uh, it's a chain. Uh, it's a chain. When you have, for every one job, 
on the factory floor, you have at least at least 10 jobs down the value chain. Uh, so it's a very connected industry. Uh, the, the more vehicles you produce, the more vehicles you sell, uh, the more jobs you create, not just in the factory, not just in the automotive sector itself, but in also other related fields. So with, with direct and indirect jobs, uh, the automotive sector has the capacity to really generate millions, millions of jobs in, in Nigeria and really spur the growth of the economy. Well, as we begin to wind down, we must ask um, how the National Automotive Design and Development Council has carried on, what it's looking at in the future, and in terms of, uh, we always ask this, the funding for its projects, and uh, why even at this time, this point in time, we think that it's a highly relevant uh, industry for us to uh, put our energies into. Yes, the NADDC, uh, in our pursuit of really developing the local automotive sector, uh, acknowledge it has to be done the right way. When we continue to promote vehicles, when we continue to promote component production in Nigeria, it has to be the right type of vehicles, the right type of uh, components. Uh, the world is moving green, electric vehicles. So what we are pushing for now is the production of electric vehicles, the production of components that would go into electric vehicles, and also the provision of that charging infrastructure. Uh, we wouldn't go electric vehicles 100% overnight, and that is why we have a transition fuel, auto gas, uh, which plays right into the national gas expansion program of the federal government. Uh, we know that Nigeria has actually more gas than it does crude oil, and gas can be used as CNG or LPG to power transportation. So we already have uh, stakeholders that are actually producing gas powered vehicles, OMA vehicles out of Inewi. So we see that as a transition fuel as we continue to approach 100% uh, electric powered vehicles. Well, yeah, you know, quite recently, um, you attended uh, um, the presentation of uh, some gas powered buses, if I, re if I recollect, um, uh, by uh, one of the transport unions. Mm. And um, questions were raised by those who attended on so many issues, not the least safety. Mm. Now you talk about, where you talk about gas powered. Mm. How safe are those? They're very safe uh, because the company that is supplying those uh, over 2,000 buses to RTN, uh, OMA, uh, operates at international safety standards. Uh, so these are factory-built gas-powered vehicles with all the safety uh, precautions taken to ensure that, that they are done right. And then CNG itself is actually safe. Uh, it, 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 it burns cleaner. And the structure of the whole systems, the cylinders, the, the, the fueling lines, everything is done to maximum safety uh, requirements. So I raised this question because um, I, it was one of the issues that was raised there. Mm -hmm. Given the space of the, the spate of um, gas explosions and gas stations, and these vehicles, of course, uh, would need specialized um, uh, depots to fill up or, or something, mm -hmm. you know. Going by what's been happening, so many people wonder if it would be <laughs> a wise thing to go for that. But again, you are the expert here, so uh, allay these fears. Gas is, is, is very safe. It's very safe. A lot of precautions have been taken in terms of the way the whole system is designed and built with a lot of uh, safety and, and cut-off switches. Okay. <laughs> well, the next... Um, a couple of years, where do we see the NADDC and uh, the dream of uh, the automotive industry in Nigeria? Yes, we hope that not too long from now uh, we will unveil our designs of those two vehicles. And what we intend to do is invite the private sector to take them as blueprints to mass produce. Okay. As I say, government is not in the business of doing business. But we are coming up with a blueprint, with a solution that the private sector can take and run with. Uh, we will continue to promote vehicle electrification because that is the ultimate future for automobiles uh, and we will also continue to promote uh, the purchase and procurement of vehicles built in Nigeria. All right. 
would like to thank you and wish you well mm -hmm. uh, and the quest to make Niger one of uh, the world's leading uh, producers and, and uh, as we quickly round off uh, we'd like to see many more Jelania leaves out there you know designing and uh, w w what would it take I think that process is, is happening already. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, we do have uh, a number of young designers working for NADDC, and we are also guiding other young designers so that they go to the right schools, become those excellent professionals that will design more and more vehicles for Nigeria and Africa. Right. Jelani Aliu, MFR, Director General, National Automotive Design and Development Council. It's always interesting talking to you. It's always mm -hmm. fantastic time. I would like to thank you for coming on. One on one. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Yes. Yeah. And that's our program today. We thank you for watching. Next week we'll be back with one on one. I'm Cyril Stober. Continue to stay safe. <laughs>